Hey what's up guys and welcome to the Head Start Lab series Volume 5 on music production. Now this is a free tutorial brought to you by the Recording Connection Audio Program, the only program that gets you inside a real studio where you learn from industry professionals on their equipment. In this video series we're going to show you everything that you need to know about music production. And all these videos were made from real tutoring sessions at the Recording Connection. So in addition to learning in a real professional studio, all of our students receive free unlimited tutoring sessions while in the program. Let's go ahead and begin. Hey, what's up guys? Eddie Martinez here with the Recording Radio and Film Connection and welcome back to how to compose a song in Logic Pro X. Now, in this video, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to recap on what we did in our previous video, which was adding a whole bunch of uh, new audio uh, regions or, and tracks uh, recordings into our overall project. And then we're going to go ahead and clean them up a bit with some editing and uh, replace some sections that didn't come out so well. So let's go ahead and get started at the very beginning. And we're going to select this instrument, the jump up bass. We're going to double click it. And now what we're looking at is the MIDI information. Let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit bigger so we can see this in more depth. So as you can see right here, a lot of the, these uh, uh, strikes look like they happen spot on. Uh, but just to play it safe. Uh, I know that the smallest notes here are 16th notes, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're quantized to 16th notes. So I'm going to select any, you know, area outside of the uh, selected, uh, you know, instruments and hit Command A to select them all. Then I'm going to go over here to where it says Time Quantize. I'm going to hit Quantize and that should move, all, you know, all these little segments ever so slightly so that they're quantized to the nearest uh, 16th note. Okay, so when we play this back, it should sound uh, spot on perfect. And we're going to move on to our next section uh, that, that's coming to follow on our next track, the mellow poly. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, so that sounded nice. Let's go ahead and move over to our next section right here. It's going to be the mellow poly. We're going to do the same thing. Double click on this uh, section. So we, we can look at the MIDI information for this track. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of notes right here. Uh, looks like the smallest notes are 16th notes. So we're going to go ahead and do the same. We're going to go ahead and select an area outside of the uh, MIDI information. Do a Command A to select them all. Go over to our quantize area, quantize time, and we're going to quantize this to our 16th notes. And that should keep everything pretty much uh, quantized to the nearest 16th note, as it did before with our previous MIDI track. Now, I kind of like how this note comes in a little bit quick, uh, but if I wanted to, I can go ahead and move this, move that one uh, 16th note later, and we'll hear how it sounds now. So either way sounds nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it where it was, because sometimes I like small little imperfections like that because uh, it helps the song sound less repetitive in, in some small way. So let's go ahead and play back again.
right, cool. So um, yeah, this section seems uh, done well. Now we're going to go ahead and move over to this section. Now, when I was recording this, I record, I don't know if you saw the last video, but uh, I recorded all of these uh, three different or four different sections all at once. So uh, that's why there's a small break right here because I wasn't able to switch uh, to the next instrument on time. I just waited uh, two measures out to start playing. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and extend this beginning over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut. Okay. There's a few ways you could do this. Uh, simply just uh, go over here to your scissors tool, cut right on the line, and you could do something like a option command type of thing. Actually, let's go ahead and go back to our pointer tool. It wants to be a little tricky with me. It's fine. And just create two sections. All right, so now I have uh, two, uh, I guess, cycled sections right here. And also want to go ahead and select them all. And also make sure that it's nice and quantized. Now, since it's uh, done with an arpeggiator, it's probably going to be quantized already, if you can't tell. Uh, but, you know, uh, better safe than sorry. Command A. And we're working with 16th notes again, quantize. And yeah, so it didn't really quantize at all because, again, uh, since it, I was using the arpeggiator, it was already quantized to 16th notes. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. All right, awesome. Cool, let's go ahead and close this out and move over to our next uh, area of MIDI, which is gonna be the cinema strings. Uh, and actually, you know what? I do like what I did in the beginning. I kind of had this uh, going up or ascending up. And then uh, somewhere around here, I don't know, I tried to start freestyling it. It got kind of crazy. I don't like the way it sounds. So let's go ahead and double click on this area right here. We're gonna quantize again, so Command A. Quantize these notes. Uh, it, I think uh, the shortest notes are actually quarter notes, but I don't think my playing was so off that it was more than a 16th note. So either way, it, it, it did some sort of correction right here. As you can tell right here, I have like this little um, piece of audio or MIDI, MIDI information that I don't need. So I can go ahead and take that out. And if I hit any bad notes, I obviously uh, just the same with all these other pieces of MIDI, I can go ahead and grab it. And move it in you know any position that I want. I can lengthen or shorten notes, make them shorter or longer, that sort of stuff. So when you're working with MIDI, uh, you know quantizing is just one aspect of the MIDI editing. Uh, just so that you know. Um, but for the most part, I did a pretty good job of, of playing the right notes. Except that I don't like this section right here. So we're going to go ahead and cut this up and uh, have it change just ever so slightly. So let's go ahead and click out of our piano roll. We'll go back over here uh, to our arrangement and we'll move this down a couple of measures. All right, cool. So I want to go ahead and chop it right here. So let's go back to our scissor, scissor tool, pardon me. <laughs> and we'll clip it right there. And I don't like this whole section, which is around eight measures or maybe even longer. See how many sections? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So fifteen or sixteen measures there, actually. So I was way off with my count there. But yeah, cut that out. Don't want that there. And we'll delete it. Oh, let's go ahead and undo that. If you didn't see what I did there, I accidentally cut the tail end of that. I didn't want to do that. So let's go ahead and switch our tools to our pointer tool. Select this one, delete that. And we're going to want to go ahead and uh, copy and paste this over. Now, there's a couple ways you could do it. You can do the command drag thing. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you could uh, just loop it, which I'm going to do right there. Works just as fine. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and hear the section back. Then measure 73. So this last note I want to go ahead and change. Um, I want to go ahead and bring this up a few octaves, maybe at least one. Let's go ahead and do that. So. So I can either leave it there, which sounds uh, just fine, or I can bring it up higher so that it seems like the last note that played is the one that sustains. Or we can move it to this region right here, or this area right here, which will kind of give it a, a better effect, I think. Let's go ahead and go back a little. All right, nice. So uh, that's how you edit MIDI in Logic Pro X, of course. And also, this is part of the process of uh, creating a song. Because when you create a song, you know, you, all, you obviously need to know how to edit really, really well. Uh, and a lot of this type of stuff, once you get really good at it, you could actually, uh, as you're playing it back the one time, you could even edit it down. Uh, I could have done that for you guys as well. But since this is a tutorial, I want to show you guys the step-by-step -step process of uh, how that works when you're uh, playing back and going into different sections, different parts of each MIDI region and re-editing it so that it sounds you know, more perfect. So yeah, I uh, hope this video was helpful. Of course, stay tuned for the next video, which we're going to go ahead and uh, do some light mixing right here in this section, okay? So I'll catch you guys for that video. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finance is a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.